Hey friends, Ash here with Jen's Hints. Hope you guys are doing well. It's time for another fragrance guide. Today we're tackling one of the best selling fragrance lines on the market today, Yves Saint Laurent. Why? So we got five fragrances to go over here. We got the Eau de Toilette, the Eau de Parfum, Eau Fraiche, Le Parfum, and Why Live? Live, why live? I'm gonna break down the fragrances a little bit for you guys, let you know which ones are better for which things, and maybe at the end of this video, if you don't know about any of these fragrances, you'll have a better idea of which ones you may wanna check out and which ones you may not. So let's jump into it. Hey guys, I will have each one of these fragrances linked in the description below in case you want to check them out down there. And if you ever do shop at jomashop.com, use the code GENTS8 to save yourself $8 off any order over $110. In case you're unaware of Joma Shop, it is a fragrance discounter. Actually, it's a lot of things discounter. And one other thing before we get started, why Eau de Toilette? This little beauty right here. Why Eau de Toilette is reformulated and new for 2022. The original version of Why Eau de Toilette is discontinued now. So basically, if you buy YEDT now, you wanna be going for this one, Y Eau de Toilette 2022, if possible, because it does, in my opinion, smell better than the original YEDT. So, why Eau de Toilette 2022? This one, what is it good for? How does it smell? Well, it's probably actually the most versatile one of the entire bunch of Y fragrances, but for most people, it's not gonna be their first choice when it comes to the Y line. This one is gonna be a really nice office fragrance, but it has more versatility than just being an office scent. It's great for casual use. It's also a potential evening fragrance, though it definitely leans more toward daytime use. It's very fresh and clean. It's not as sweet as most of the other fragrances in the line. You have this zingy opening with bergamot and ginger, very, again, fresh, like I said, and an ozonic quality to it. As it dries down, it does sweeten up a little bit as compared to the original Y Eau de Toilette due to uh, an extra infusion of vanilla in the new version of Y EDT. This one you can wear just about year round. It's gonna be better suited for spring, summer, and fall than winter, but because of the versatility that this fragrance has, you can pull it off in winter as well. Just spray it on maybe a little bit more than you would during the hotter months. Why Eau de Toilette doesn't get talked about all that often from this line of fragrances, but this stuff you can wear just about anywhere. And I actually think that this new one, YEDT 2022, smells really nice. I like this one a lot. I don't think it leans too far youthful. Just about any age range can pull the fragrance off. YEDT is a really nice jumping off point. And the DNA of this fragrance, you're gonna find across all the other fragrances in the line. So if you smell this fragrance, you get used to it, you can pick it out from the crowd, then any other Y fragrance, when you smell that, you'll be able to smell this fragrance in there. Y Eau de Toilette, I think is better than it gets credit for. Really solid fragrance and the versatility there unmatched across the entire line, in my opinion. Now we're gonna start going in chronological order. Like I said, Y Eau de Toilette was reformulated. So technically this is the newest release as of this video, but the original Y Eau de Toilette was the first release, which is why we covered this one first. So after that, we've got Y Eau de Parfum. Now, Y Eau de Parfum is the most hyped, the most talked about fragrance in the line, the most worn, the most popular. This one you can absolutely also wear year round, but this is not going to be as nice in the summer as Y Eau de Toilette, though it will be a little bit better in the winter than Y Eau de Toilette. This one has an opening of apple, ginger, and bergamot. It's also got a decent amount of sage in the fragrance. As it dries down, you have an amber woody base that comes out. You also have tonka in here and additional woody notes in the base as well. So that's going to lend a little bit more sweetness, a little bit more depth and masculinity to the scent. Now this one is sweeter than Y Eau de Toilette overall, and the sweetness is a bit different as well. In Y Eau de Toilette, the sweetness is more this fresh and uplifting sweetness, like I said, with an ozonic tinge to it. In Y Eau de Toilette, it's a little bit of a, a richer, more syrupy sweetness. And it's the type of sweetness that in the summer, if you spray too much of this on, it can come across a little bit overwhelming and not smell as pleasant. So do keep that in mind. If you decide to wear this in the summer, maybe dial back the sprays a little bit. Over the years, there have been a lot of people that have commented about this fragrance and how it didn't work all that well in the heat. 
And a lot of that can be because if you spray it as much when it's very hot out as you would when it's very cold out, it's gonna be a little bit too heavy, a little bit too much. Now, as far as when you'd wear this, it's a little bit of an opposite as compared to the Eau de Toilette. It's gonna be a little bit better suited for evening wear than daytime wear, but because it has that wide DNA, it has that versatility, you can pull it off during either. And one of the big driving factors that makes Y Eau de Parfum so popular is the compliment factor that the fragrance has. If all you're after is compliments as far as fragrances in this line, then Y Eau de Parfum is probably the place that you should start. Another thing a lot of people like with YEDP is the performance. It's better than Y Eau de Toilette as far as the longevity goes, as far as the projection goes. This fragrance is an above average performer, so you're gonna get good longevity out of it. You're gonna get eight plus hours potentially off your skin, and the fragrance is gonna project out far enough to get other people's attention, much more so than Y Eau de Toilette. But going back to Y Eau de Toilette, that is one of the things that makes this one probably a better office fragrance for the vast majority of you out there than this one because this one has decent performance but not overly aggressive and in the office a lot of times you don't want something that's going to project really heavily like this one does so that's why eau de parfum most popular of the line for sure and from there we're going on to why eau fraiche so this is pretty much exactly what you would think it would be this is taking the Y dna specifically from Y eau de toilette and freshening it up and turning it into more of a summer centric fragrance. So you'll find a lot of similarities between the original and this one. Differences as well, of course. So with this, you're gonna get a big blast of lemon in the opening, mixing together with a fresh ginger and then a minty undertone. You also have geranium in here, a very fresh, clean lavender, and then woods in the base of the fragrance. So to some people, this is gonna be maybe a little bit more basic than the other fragrances in the Y line as far as how it comes across. It's not maybe as complex, but it is definitely the briskest, the freshest, of the entire bunch and it's going to compete with fragrances like Chanel Allure Homme Sport or Allure Homme Sport Cologne and Dior Homme Cologne from those other fragrance houses. It's the sportiest fragrance from the entire line. It's probably the best gym fragrance from the line as well. And it's the best fragrance if you're looking to do something in a really high heat situation where you just want a fragrance that's gonna be very clean and fresh and refreshing. So Y Eau Fraiche is more of a fragrance made for a specific niche. It's not trying to be as versatile as some of the other fragrances in the line. Not that you couldn't wear Y Eau Fraiche during the fall or the spring or anything like that. You absolutely could, but this is a fragrance fragrance made more for summertime, high heat situations, the gym, and daytime use. After that, we have Yves Saint Laurent Y Live, which is a really bad name because as I kind of joked about at the beginning of the video, you could also pronounce it Y Live. So Y Live is going to be a little bit of a more youthful take on the Y DNA, in my opinion. It has more of a bubblegummy sweetness off the top, which reminds me a little bit of uh, taking something like Paco Rabanne's Invictus and taking little parts of that fragrance and then injecting that into the Y DNA. DNA. So like a, a little bit of Jurassic Park action going here, you know, taking things and splicing them together in an unholy fashion. This is another one a little bit like Y Eau de Parfum where you can absolutely pull it off during the summer, but during the summer you wanna be aware, you wanna be cognizant of where you're going, what you're doing, and how much of the fragrance you sprayed on because the sweetness in here having that bubblegummy edge and, and really being quite forward in the fragrance when you first spray it on, having that sweetness right there in your face. If you spray it on too heavily, it can again come across not as pleasant as you'd like. The performance of Y Live is good good, but not as good as Y Eau de Parfum. So it's not quite on that level. I would say Y Live outperforms Eau Fraiche, outperforms the Eau de Toilette, but it's just not on that same level as far as projection goes and longevity goes as the Eau de Parfum. And this one I'd say is equally split between daytime or nighttime use because the sweetness in here makes this one also a huge compliment pulling fragrance. 
When I first got this in, when the fragrance was brand new, I was a little iffy on it because I'm not the biggest fan of Paco Rabanne's Invictus and having that little bit of an Invictus style in this fragrance made me hesitant to wear it. As I wore it more, I did grow to like it a lot more. And one of the things that did help me like it so much is the compliment factor. This is one of those fragrances that's actually surprisingly great at pulling positive attention, especially from people that you know. Why Live is one of my most consistently complimented fragrances pretty much right up there with Y Eau de Parfum. So if you're looking for a more youthful fragrance in the Y line that's really good on a night out, whether we're talking clubbing or going on a date, that has solid versatility overall, maybe not as much versatility as Y Eau de Toilette or Y Eau de Parfum, but still has solid versatility, I would check this one out, Y Life. And then last but not least, we have Y Le Parfum. And this is kind of hard for me to, to button down because depending on my mood, I may go for YEDT or EDP or Y Live or something like that. But if I could keep only one from the line, it would probably be this one, Le Parfum. With this fragrance, you'll find a strong similarity to Y Eau de Parfum, They're quite similar. So if you own one, you may find it redundant to own the other one. So why Eau de Parfum comes across a little bit as a, a fresher, sweet fragrance, and then why Le Parfum also quite sweet, but in a different way, a little bit deeper, more of an emphasis on the tonka here, not as much emphasis on the fruitiness and the opening in Le Parfum as compared to the Eau de Parfum. Also, the lavender pops out a little bit more in Y Le Parfum as compared to Y Eau de Parfum. Y Le Parfum is a little bit more classy. But again, the two fragrances are quite similar. So with Y Eau de Parfum and Y Le Parfum, as I said, it can be pretty redundant to own both of these. It just depends on what you're going for overall. If you're just looking for straight up compliments, Y Eau de Parfum usually works better. If you want to take on the Y line that is ever so slightly more grown up, then you could go Y Le Parfum. That being said, this doesn't come across at all as a mature fragrance, so keep that in mind. Overall, the Y line is really solid for somebody looking for something that's very versatile and people pleasing and easygoing and modern as well. It's a line of fragrances that competes with things like Dior Sauvage, Bleu de Chanel, uh, Armani's Aqua de Jo line. And I guess you could also say the Luna Rosa line from Prada and the Guilty line from Gucci. For me, I put the Y line up toward the top right there with Dior and Chanel. I think as far as the quality goes and the ease of use of these fragrances, it's right there with Sauvage and Bleu de Chanel. And it ultimately just comes down to what DNA, what scent profile from those three that you like the most. All right, guys, that will do it for me. Thank you for hanging with me here and hearing me talk about why. I'll try to do some more guides as time goes on. Thank you guys for hanging with me. Stay safe out there and I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys later.